Hello, and welcome to another episode of Low End Box TV. In this episode, we are starting on an epic journey. Over the next few videos, we are going to show you how to set up a highly available WordPress site from scratch. This was a series of tutorials that we did on lowendbox.com. I'll include links below. Uh, it was very popular and thought we'd do it live here, so to speak, on YouTube so you guys can kind of see what it, what it uh, looks like and how it works. So our goal here is to have a WordPress site that is impervious to VPS failures, uh, web server failures, even in theory data center failures, right? We'll, we'll put them in two different data centers. One data center could go up in flames and the user at home in his browser, some random person on the internet, would have no idea, right? The thing would just keep working for them. Uh, now we want uh, to have full operations on both nodes. This is not just a read-only copy or a cache or anything like that, but we want both nodes to be functional so that if someone posts on one um, a node that is replicated to the other node, etc. cetera. Uh, if I'm an author and an author writes an article on one node, it appears on both nodes. And of course, we'll set it up with HTTPS using Let's Encrypt and, and the usual uh, kind of setup. So, you know, we're gonna have to answer some difficult questions here. We have some technical challenges that we need to work through, you know, some things to think about. What if the VPS goes down, um, either fully or partially, right? The VPS could go down or maybe just a web server fails for some reason. Um, if we have multiple VPSs serving the same WordPress site, how do we keep them in sync? We have to consider uh, not just the database, but also things like, you know, somebody, an author, uploads media on one side. How does that media get to the other side? And think about, you know, I'm gonna put a, uh, a photo in um, a post. How does that photo get to both nodes? Um, and then, you know, other questions that you get into with any kind of high availability setup, you know, how rigorous does this have to be? Is it okay if things get out of sync by a few minutes or do they always have to be in sync? Um, and then, uh, you know, we also look at it from the, the client's point of view. In other words, uh, some random internet user, how does it know which node to point to? And this is often um, a real key challenge in these kind of high availability setups. So there's a number of different ways of doing high availability. Kind of the classic one going you know, way back was you would have a floating IP. And I shouldn't say that it's classic in the sense that it's outdated. Many places still do this. Uh, but the idea is you point everything at this floating IP and it lives on one server. And then the other server is periodically asking that server, it's heart beating, saying, hey, you still there? Are you still working? Can I still get to that floating IP? And if it detects it can't, then it brings up the floating IP and you have a redirect. Um, in this case, we're gonna use round robin DNS as our solution. Before we continue, I'd like to highlight one of our community advertisers. Hostsailer is a a Dubai-based hosting provider that offers shared hosting, reseller hosting, VPS, and dedicated servers at aggressive prices. They offer a diversity of services in all of these market segments in an attempt to match the right product with the customer's needs, and everything they do is backed by an ironclad service level agreement. You can deploy their services in either the Netherlands or Romania. They accept many forms of payment, including bitcoins and other forms of cryptocurrency. With VMs priced as low as $2 per month on an annual contract, it's worth your time to check out Wholesalers' offers on Low End Talk or Low End Box, or visit their site at wholesaler.com. Um, and Round Robin DNS, what it does is when the web browser asks the uh, uh, DNS, hey, where is this uh, web domain? It gets back a couple different addresses, or well, actually as many as you want, you know, two, four, six, whatever. Uh, but in our case, it'll be two, and it'll try one of them. And if it doesn't get a response, it'll try the other one. And only if it can't access both of them will it uh, give the user uh, an error. And this works on all of the major modern browsers. That was not always the case, but um, for several years now, it's been uh, pretty standard in uh, web browsers. It also keeps those that list in its um, in its cache so that if it's working on node number one and it's, it's getting web pages from it and suddenly node number one goes down, it knows to try on node number two before it throws 
up a, an error to the end user. Before we continue, I'd like to highlight one of our community advertisers. Hostsailer is a Dubai-based hosting provider that offers shared hosting, reseller hosting, VPS, and dedicated servers at aggressive prices. They offer a diversity of services in all of these market segments in an attempt to match the right product with the customer's needs, and everything they do is backed by an ironclad service level agreement. You can deploy their services in either the Netherlands or Romania. They accept many forms of payment, including bitcoins and other forms of cryptocurrency. With VMs priced as low as $2 per month on an annual contract, it's worth your time to check out Hostsailer's offers on Low End Talk or Low End Box, or visit their site at Hostsailer.com. So Round Robin DNS, the client, is a big part of our solution. We're going to be using um, a couple other technologies. We'll be using uh, MariaDB's native multi-master replication. So uh, the database will be kept in sync. And then we're going to use a product called DRBD which will uh, keep our media in sync. And this is kind of the, the gold solution. You may or may not use this uh, or need this. A much simpler solution would be to use rsync, right? Um, if you're updating primarily on one node or if you're, you know, you, you wanna keep this as simple as possible, you could just do all your updates on one node, upload everything there, and then just have a, an rsync that, that rsyncs that media directory over and that kind of thing. That's an acceptable solution, but we'll do the gold solution here, which is with uh, DRBD. And then of course, uh, Let's Encrypt, um, but we'll have to solve, when we set up Let's Encrypt, we have to solve the issue of how CertBot can update um, when Round Robin DNS could return either node's address. And here's a diagram of this architecture. You've got the, the user on the internet at the top, he goes into round robin DNS and gets one of the nodes, and then either node one or node two will come back to him. And um, our stack is just Nginx and PHP FPM. That's a pretty standard uh, web serving uh, setup. And then MariaDB in MariaDB replication, multi-master replication, and then we'll have a file system with DRBD that is uh, replicated black. And it's actually not the file system level, it's at kind of the block level. Um, now for DRBD, in this case, we're gonna be using Linode. And the reason I'm using Linode, there's nothing special about them, I just happen to have uh, some VPS. I think I still have some credits there, so I thought I'd use them for this project, but, uh, what you can do with Linode is you can get block storage. So we'll set up um, a, an extra volume on each node that we will use for DRBD. If you didn't have that, then when you're setting up your KVM, um, you know, you're installing your, your VPS, you would want to have a dedicated partition, right? So that's how DRBD works. It's a dedicated partition on this node and a dedicated partition on that node, and that's what you synchronize at that block or device level. So if you're um, just installing from a template, you may not have that uh, available to you. So you'd want to install from the ISO, and as you're configuring the disk, make sure you set up, a, or I should say partitioning the disk, make sure you keep a partition um, set up so that you can, on, on both nodes, you can keep those in sync and devote those to the DRBD um, uh, setup. Uh, or if you're using well, it could be Linode, could be uh, DigitalOcean, could be Vulture, uh, could be a BiVM slab. Of course, this would certainly work on AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, any of those. But any place that has block storage, you can just uh, create a new volume and use that for DRBD. So that's uh, kind of what we're going to be working on here in this tutorial series. Uh, we're going to, again, by the time we're done, we will have a completely redundant, high available um, uh, WordPress setup and we are going to start installing things in the next tutorial. I'd like to invite you to visit us at lowendbox or lowendtalk.com where we have the best deals in the hosting industry, uh, detailed technical content like this, uh, thoughts and opinions from industry leaders, and very spirited discussion. If you're looking to save money on hosting or would like to engage with like-minded hobbyists, please visit us at lowendbox.com or lowendtalk.com. Till next time, happy hosting.